Hello everyone and welcome to a book review. Now this particular book is for book two in a trilogy so I'm going to tell you now so that if you have not read the first book you should exit out of this video because you will be spoiled for the first book. <clears throat> I'm going to try not to spoil anything. I will not spoil anything that happens in this book in book two, but some things I say will more than likely spoil some events. Especially one thing will spoil something that happened in the first book. So, and the book I'm talking about is A Time of Blood by John Gwynn. So if you have not read the first book, which is A Time of Dread, now's your chance. So this is book number two in the series of Blood and Bone. This takes place a couple hundred years, at least, yeah, a couple, I would say a couple hundred years after the events of the series of The Faithful and the Fallen which is like malice, wrath, ruin, and valor. Not in that order. So this series you really should need to read after the Faithful and the Fallen series. Okay, so what is this one about? It's a lot of war. It's a battle between good and evil. Um, lines are starting to be blurred. Like maybe power is going to some people's head. Um, you're still trying to, at this point, I'm kind of like, has the good become more evil and the evil become more good? Or are they both kind of more evil now? Or are they, the good still good? And the, So you're still trying to figure things out on this. There's a lot of war. It is very dark. There is, it is very graphic and gory. Okay, so graphic when it comes to bloodshed. I mean, you, it's war and they're fighting with bows and arrows and swords and things like that. You have a lot of fantastical creatures like for example there's this issue where all of a sudden it's like I don't know there's these creatures that have never been seen before you have worms like these huge huge creatures you have wolvens it's the same thing that was the these are the same creatures that were in the first series um, but there are some new creatures and they are used one of this set of creatures is used with dark magic okay uh, so do be aware of that you have a bit of bit of dark magic in here the other set of creatures is used by almost like you would think like if someone's bitten like a werewolf except that's not a werewolf and then they're not only can be bit by and turn into this creature by that but it sounds like they can just by being around people and being in contact that is highly contagious like if they're in contact with their blood that they can turn into this creature type of a thing and they're very creepy <laughs> okay there's a lot of dark magic in this and a lot of war and a lot of bloodshed so at the end of book one we left off um and you do have animal death as well okay uh we left off book one with some war and things kind of building up we're at the midst of all the battles and everything there's been some major battles in this and some major reveals um so one of the things is that in the first book there's a giant a giantess a female giant named sig um <clears throat> and she would ride on this giant bear well you if, in the first book Sig gives her life to protect those that she cares about. So she is dead. Her bear survives the attack. And you see the grief that not only the friends of someone who has fallen in war have, but also the grief of someone's beloved animal. So in this case, a bear. And how the bear grieves for the loss of someone that they cared about. In this case, Sig. Um, very interesting. We're also met with this bear that's even bigger than Sig's bear, um, who is white. And... You can kind of see this little connection between the two bears, which is really cute and sweet, I think. Um, and yet the big white bear is a little intimidated and nervous around humans. And it's interesting because there's this part where the white bear will growl at one of the humans and Sig's bear, um, I'm blanking on her name, but she swats the other bear in the, on the muzzle and is like, yeah, don't do that. And so then the white bear kind of backs off a little bit. It was really cute, that connection between the two, and I loved that. Um, you have what's called half-breeds in this book. Uh, 
And they're talked about a lot and how they're an abomination, they should be killed, but yet there are some parents who went to great lengths to protect their child, even though their child is a half-breed, and some that were basically considered, you consider brainwashed to kill their child. So you do have child death. Um, and these half-breeds are half-human, half... -human, half Think, think angel, okay? So they do get wings and can fly and all of that. But they're not purebred. In this case, they're called Ben Elim. They're not purebred Ben Elim. They're not purebred humans. They're a cross between the two. And that's supposedly an abomination and they should be slaughtered and killed. So do be aware of that as well with child death. And you you do get one of the characters um, is Fritha. And she's one point of view that we are following. And she gave birth to a half-breed, and you're seeing this anger that she has towards that whole situation and certain people that were involved in that, and the anger that she has, and yeah, and things like that. She is one that does use the dark magic to create some of these creatures, and so she has this motherly bond with some of them, and you see that and how she longs for that connection between a mother and a creation, whether it's a child or something that she made. So this particular book was published in 2019. And I did listen to the audiobook with this. It is narrated by Damian Lynch, and the audiobook is 15 hours and 27 minutes at one time speed. So trigger warnings, you have death of a child, you have animal death. Um, it's still animal death, even though there are these fantastical creatures, it's still animal death. Um, and then you have loss of family and loss of friend that comes up a lot and reminiscing about someone that has passed away due to war and violence um, and things like that. So this follows four points of view. So you have Fritha, who I mentioned. You have Bleda, who is set to become a king um, to help unite two different warring kingdoms. You're following the POV of um, Riv, who is a half-breed. You do learn that. And you see a lot of the stuff that she has to deal with in that. And some of the secrets that are revealed were kind of shocking <laughs> um, in that. And then we're also following the POV of Drem. So four POVs, and Drem is one that we're following a lot in the first book, and he's the one that lost a family member and is learning more about his heritage and stuff, where he comes from and things like that. So now that's pretty much all I can tell you without spoiling anything, especially where this is the second book. That's pretty much all I can say. So let's talk about words that come up. You have uh, the word hell comes up, I counted one time in the whole book. Bitch comes up three times. And damn comes up four, as well as bastard comes up four times. The other word that comes up is arse, which is used as ass, like a dumb arse. Make him fall in his arse type of a thing. So arse, A-R-S-E is what is used, but it is basically ass. So, and that comes up nine times. So let me know, have you read this book? Now, before I do let you go, there are a couple of things you can't really see. There you can see a little bit. I do have a few tabs. There are a few things that stuck out to me. And so I'll read these to you and these will not spoil anything. A person is made by their heart and their wits and by the deeds they do. Their choices, not whether they have pale skin or dark skin, wings or no wings, one hand or two. How can any one of us be held accountable for our parents' deeds? If that were so, every wrongdoing that has a judgment meted out would be inflicted upon the children of the wrongdoer. If a man commits murder and goes to the gallows for it, do we hang his sons and daughters too? If a woman steals, do we cut off the right hands of her children? Definitely something to think about. Some of us are at our most dangerous when we are scared. Each small step taken for a greater good, and then before you know it, you have walked a thousand leagues from where you used to be. And how do you return to that place? Return to the person you were. Or, if you cannot do that, how do you become the person that you wish to be? Two more. There is much in life that is beyond our control. Events that sweep us sweep us up and along and along. Actions that wrap us tight in their consequences. Stop raging about the things you cannot change. Just be true to yourself and do what you can do. 
love those worth loving, and to the other world with the rest of it. That is all any of us can do. All right, and this last one I'm going to tell you is, fear is not the enemy. It is the herald of danger, and that is only wisdom. Fear is wisdom, but you must master it, lest it master you. So, some great things in this book. Highly enjoyable, highly entertaining. Again, do be aware, just like all of the other books, the Faithful and the Fallen series and book one in this trilogy, they are very graphic. You do see all the bloodshed and dismemberments and other things <laughs> that get very graphic. So do be aware of that. Uh, so that's pretty much all I can say. Let me know, have you read this series? Have you read this trilogy? Have you read any of John Gwynn's book? He has some other books that are out um, that are not a part of this this world right here um, as far as like The Faithful and the Fallen and A Time of, or of Blood and Bone, at least that I know of. They, maybe they're a part of the same world, but they're following something completely different different events. I don't know, but I just know they're not in session like concession or in sequence like these books. Anyway, let me know if you've read anything by John Gwynn, what you think of the writing, what you think of these books. Have you read anything? Are you intrigued to continue on with the series or not? Talk to me in the comment section below and until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book and I'll talk to you later.